Western crossover hats. It's a totally new term. Uh, I'm in the business there are 25 years at this shop, uh, another nine years at a shop before that. And um, the term Western crossover just pretty much came out about five years ago. It became popular. So what is a Western crossover hat? Uh, why are they so beloved and why are they so popular right now? We're going to look into that. Um, let's get started. Now let's get somewhere in between the two. So in other words, you don't want to look like a detective like this here, you know? Or like an old bluesman like this. It's a stereotypical whatever look that you just don't want. Um, and you don't want to look like a, another Marlboro man. Um, that's also a little bit too much for you. Uh, you know, let's take a look at it. You know, I think there are any real buckaroo full-out westerns here. But whatever. Um, this here a couple. Um, thing is, people look at a hat like this, and you know they don't look at it functionally. They look at it visually, cosmetically. How does it look? How does it look to me? What would I change? Generally, the first thing that people say is that big black band. It's so wide. Um, I'd like something with a thinner band. Um, this is really giving it its whole nostalgic kind of 1940s look. You know, it looks film noir, especially if you put this picture in black and white, forget it. Um, you know, after you use it a while and you do this kind of stuff, especially, you know, with all the shadows and stuff, it's real film noir where you can it up. Um, you could put everything down and get a little bit more of an Indiana Jones, earthy kind of thing, too. But, um... Essentially, 
people look at this hat and they say, what can I change to make this hat less of a cliche? It doesn't look like what, uh, you know, a detective or a gangster or a reporter would wear in a, you know, a 1930s or 40s based movie. Um, there are very simple, simple ways to change that. Um, just like they say hair is everything, you know, for a person, band is everything. So, um, you change the band on it, it becomes a completely different looking kind of thing. Like if you took this off and you put, let's say, a leather band on there, then it becomes this hat called the Roadster. Um, you could give this a little bit earthier look by just widening it back. Give it a three finger crease. Dave has a Roadster. It's one of my viewers, you see him comments a lot, it's just called simply Dave. And he wears a roadster he got from JJ Hat Center. It's got a three finger crease, which is like a cool teardrop that looks like it was made by your fingers. Okay, so what that does is it widens out the back, brings it back out, gives it a little bit more of a teardrop in Western look, it drops it. Okay, and then they put a leather band here, it totally changes the look of it. Um, when you have a thin band on something, all of a sudden, the whole film noir 1940s gangster thing is pretty much out the window and you're getting something else. Alright, like that. Alright, you see that hat right there? That is not anything somebody from 1940 would wear. Uh, the leather band is completely modern, you know, or, you know, maybe those kind of things came out in the 80s, 90s and, uh, you know, last 40 years or something, but uh, it's a modern look. It's definitely an earthy, modern crossover look. It's a, uh, a dress hat with the leather bands. Now, the Stradaliner gives you the same basic thing. It's giving you a teardrop. So you got this earthy kind of, uh, for instance, look at these hats, all these westerns. They have teardrops. These are Western hats that the average guy with an overcoat can wear. It doesn't look totally Texas buckaroo, you know, like rodeo cowboy, because of the low crown. A hat like a, a rancher or a tycoon has a big cattle increase, which is way, way higher, and that gives you that very dramatic, tall Western look. It makes you look like you belong on a horse, or you belong, you know, this guy's from Texas or something, or this gal, you know. Um, when you drop the crown down with the teardrop, it makes it more accessible. It's a lower crown, but it's still earthy and outdoorsy and has a cool, wide, kind of chunky look. Um, it breaks up the grace of the, the crown. A, uh, a temple has a center crease, which has a certain, certain gracefulness to it. There's no angles. It's a very, from the back, it's like an M. Let me show you what I mean. It's graceful. Okay, a center crease looks dressy because it's simple and elegant, just a crease. Look at these lines. Round, like a letter M, but very soft, graceful, dare I say sensual, okay? Dare I say sensual, like Charles Nelson Riley. Um, the front, same thing, round lines. When you get into things like a teardrop, they become more angular. There are uh, straight lines, angled, sharp, you know, like the back is flat. See that? Flat. It has kind of a, I don't know, a pointed look to it. Squared off, pointed. One, two, three, like a triangular three points. You know what I'm saying? Straight lines, lots of straight lines. Where a teardrop, there's no straight lines. They're all curved lines. So um, they're taking a certain amount of the grace away from it and they're making it more chunky, western looking. I'm bad with the adjectives. They put a leather band on it, it's totally different. Now this Stradliner is like everybody's request. For the last 20 years, people have been looking for either number one, a very vintage looking hat that looks super authentic like the old days, like a Whippet or something like that, or a Temple, something that looks real deal but not super high or like a costume. They don't want to look like they're in a swing band. Well, some people do. There are some people who want to lay it on really thick. There are other people who want to have like a wicked or a temple that's authentic looking, but not overly exaggerated or, you know, too costume-like. Now, that's one type. There are other people who are looking for something a little more toned down, something 
modern, laid back difference. They don't want to look like, you know, the Fedora, what is it called? The hat tipping guy, you know, you know what I mean. Um, they don't want to look like a, a meme or a stereotype. So one way to change it, thin ribbon, makes it a totally different thing, okay? Uh, the other thing is you get a matching ribbon here. So you've got a piping here. Let, let's say this hat has white piping and then a white thin, thin ribbon here, a string with a string tie type of thing, like a western string coming out in two, two directions, like here and here. One, two. That's like a straddle liner. It looks like a western string tie with a matching binding. It's almost like a... Um, it's very western looking. Um, it's almost like a western shirt. They have piping. You know the piping on western shirts? They're on the collars and stuff. They're on the sleeves. That piping matches the yoke, which is usually dark. So it's the same thing, like a dark band and matching piping. Dark yoke, matching piping, all over the western shirt. It looks custom, like a, a western look. The strap liner gives you a polished look without looking like, you know, a, a Bogart movie. Not everybody wants that look. Um, there are a lot of people who just want to look really cool, but they want something a little different. They want something a little bit less stereotypical, maybe more modern, more handsome to, to them, more you know, interesting, a well-cut, kind of like a GQ kind of thing. It's like saying, do I want a 1940s suit, or do I want a suit that looks like it was cut for today? You know, like, uh, I don't know who's hot now, like, you know, Armani or whoever the heck, you know. Um, any designer that's like super hot right now, if they're um, making a suit, they're not going to make it look like a 1940 suit. They're going to make it look influenced by a classic suit, maybe. You know, maybe they'll change the lapels a little or something, but it's going to be a modern design. So that's what these people are trying to do, like with the Stradaliner, in my opinion. It's kind of like the premier Stradaliner is authentic one from the 40s or whatever. The SE or the Special Edition uh, Stradaliner is the more sort of standard version. That's a modernized version of the Stradaliner, just like the Whippet is not the same Whippet from, you know, like 70 years ago or, you know, 100 years ago or something. I don't know how long it dates back. I'm going to say 75 to 85 years at least. Whippets back then had these big crowns that are rectangular and stuff, you know. People don't want that anymore. Only a few cork sniffing connoisseur types, you know, people who are like into the swing thing or the vintage thing or just really into the hat thing and they want the real deal. But even those guys will lower the crown a bit because they can't get too high and boxy like a Bogart movie. Depends on your height, too. So, um, what I'm really getting at, I think, I don't know what I'm getting at. I just noticed how dusty my guitar is. It's really bothering me. What I'm getting at is that um, the Strata Liner is a hat for the modern day. It's for today. It's got a tiny bit of a Western authenticism because you know you see people wearing Strata Liners, you know, like pictures like when they're carting Lee Har uh, Harvey Oswald in Dallas. You know, the cops have on those open roads and Strats, and OBJ wore them and stuff. They're classic hats, but people want a little crown, they don't want it out of control, and they want something less of a, a costume and a stereotype. They want a great hat. Now let me show you some Stradaliners, some images. Um, the Western crossover phase, I think, is mostly based around the Stetson Stradaliner and the Stetson Open Road. Those are the two big ones. They just came out with those hats in Pure Beaver for next fall. Okay. Stradaliners are here on the bottom. The pure Stradaliner is the new one they're coming out with. Let me see if I can get some other ones here before I show you those. Premier Stradaliner. What else have got here? The SE should be coming up. That's like your standard one. I'm a little too lazy to go through this whole book right now. Socks and Stradaliner. Okay, there we go. This, they just call this straddle liner. It's like the standard version. All right. Now these guys, look at them. 
They don't have that big thick band. They have that cool ribbon, that little string tie thing, which brings you back to the old days. But it's soft. It's not hard like an open road. It's not a western hat. It doesn't take any break in. People love the gray. They love the cognac. They love the silver belly. Um, we have way different colors than this. We have a lot of different colors. We like to get contrasting bands and piping and stuff. Well, these are all like you know, monochromatic. We have this, you know, hat with brown piping or the silver belly piping. We do a dark gray one with cream piping, which is gorgeous. Um, all sorts of different combinations. But that's it. That's your straddle liner there. And dare I say, it might be one of the best hats for, you know, for the modern age. It's a classic hat. It's nice and soft. It's got a good crown for most people. And, um, and the band is really neat. Now, the one thing is, if you have a wide band like this, it's functional. You can sweat into there, and that will take the salt and stuff. Basically, then it's on there. You cut it off, put a new band on. The hat is fine. Now, with the straddle liner, you just you don't have really much of a band at all. It's just cosmetic. It doesn't do much functionally. So the idea is, yes, you could put a sweat wick on the inside. We sell them on our website, www.jjhatcenter. Um, it's called Sweatband. And uh, Sweatband is really awesome. It's $5. It sticks in the hat, you know, on the band between you and the hat, and it keeps perspiration from touching the hat. Now, the other option is with the straddle liner, if you do sweat and you get a stain here, it's no big deal. Just don't let it get like out here and on here. When you see this is starting, a lot of times it starts at the stitch. It goes through the cotton stitch, like a circle of sweat here, and then it comes out. That's because the sweat is goes to the porous part. The cotton stitching is more porous. Um, so that's where it starts a lot of times. Other times it's you know it starts wherever. You cut this band off, basically what happens you're going to sweat up the straddle liner and you're going to just put on a wider band later. So that's something you always have the option of doing. Even if your thin band isn't protecting you, you're going to have to change it eventually. So the second band you put on, you put on a wider one. Like uh, this kind of band or even, you know, thinner like a you know, two finger band. Just to cover up the stains that you made. And then, you know, you can go wider next time if you miss it. But, um, yeah, straddle liner, no. And does not really protect you or soak up much perspiration. It really does nothing. But you know, it covers up the stitches under there. There's, there's like a seam and some stitches. It covers that. Um, but what it does do is it looks great. It looks really cool. So for a while, wear it, wear it, wear it. And when you sweat up the hat, change it to a wider band. That's how simple it is. So in other words, your first band will be thin. Later on, you can get some thick ones. Move on, just you know, get that. Um, the other thing is, you slap the sweat wick in there. It goes right in the front. It's about, you know, yay long. It goes in there. Adhesive. It's uh, a sticker, but it's super strong adhesive. It stays in there for 20, 30 years if you want. But they get funky after a while, so you want to change it to a clean one. And $5, you keep changing them. We've had them for like 20 years, so we're not going to run out. And they have them on Amazon, too, if you want to buy a big case of them. That's about it. I don't want to forget to tell you guys to subscribe. Um, I need the help. I want to upgrade the station. I want to get, like, a new microphone. I want to get a real camera, a big camera, and maybe a cool background for behind me. You know, like, they have these amazing backgrounds. Like, I could look like I'm in the Millennium Falcon or something like that. You know, like, in some cockpit or something. But um, I want to get some, you know, that, that's simple. It's like maybe 50 bucks on Amazon, but there's a lot of things I want to do. I want to uh, interview some people and take some field trips to hat makers and stuff. And we need a little money to do that. So one way for you guys to get me money without basically spending a penny is to hit subscribe. Because the more subscriptions I get and the more views I get, the more money I potentially get. So um, right below me, there's like those thumbs up buttons where you can hit thumbs up. I know you know how to do that. But right below those, it says subscribe, either in gray or in red. See it? Look down. Oh, wait.
It's right down there. You see? Okay. You're not looking. Look down. All right. See, it says subscribe. Okay. If you've hit it already, it says subscribe, and you're getting really bored of this speech. If you haven't hit it yet, hit it now. Oh, wait. Just hit it. There's no, uh, I don't know, no downside. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't make commercials pop up or anything. It just gives me a little tick mark so YouTube knows that more people have been watching it. So in other words, if I get a million viewers, my channel gets money and I get you know, successful and stuff. And I can do all kinds of great things with the station. If I get like you know, a thousand viewers, I can't do that many things at all. So that's the way of proving that I have viewers. Uh, one is by watching the video part most of the way through or halfway, you know, most of the way. The other way is by hitting subscribe or thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, I think, is better. Um, that's about it. And I'm going to play you guys out. We're going to talk more about Western Crossroads and the Stratoliner, uh, the difference between the different Stratoliners. And I'm going to uh, play you guys out right now. Okay? Now you, you can't play us out, little chick. You don't have your guitar with you. But next time, okay? Alright. Ooh, I'm out of tune. So, um, I'd like to thank everybody for all the cool comments. You guys have been giving me lots of cool stay safe comments and hope the family is well and all those amazing things. I hope everybody is well too and um, let's just uh, stay well. We don't want a second wave of this stupid virus to come by. I don't want anybody out there to get hurt, sick, definitely nobody dying out there. Um, if anybody dies from this virus, I'll personally come out there and bash them with the head of this guitar. I don't know if I'll do that before or after you die, but I'll probably do it before so you get so pissed that you come back to life. So anyway, let's play a little music. <laughs>
Yep. That's a good video, huh? Yep. Yeah. Get out the drugs. The bottle. Yeah. Got the narcotics? Yeah. Okay. National gun dealer's coming here. He's an arms dealer? Alright. I want you to keep me covered, okay? I want both of you to be strapped when they walk in, okay? No. It's still running.